what are the important characteristics of arthropoda arthropoda means jointed appendages appendages means legs here one example i shown their legs have many cuts we can say many joints we can say so appendages means legs their legs have many joints other thing even their body has many segments we can see many pieces joined like even their body is showing some of them are having wings some are not having wings here some examples we can say cockroach prawns crabs all types of flies we can say insects all types of insects are coming under arthropoda again we can say that they are the largest phylum we can see why because in that large number of organisms are there in comparison with the all other phylums phylum arthropoda is the largest phylum we can see why because in that large number of organisms are there even we can see that they are living in all types of habitats ranging from deepest ocean till mountains because of that anywhere we stay there all we can find at least cockroaches then flies we can say that their legs number if we see six number or six legs too many legged arthropoda we can find we can say that centipede millipede they all have many legs now their body if you are seeing its body wall consists of three layers because of that we are calling them as triploblastic triploblastic it means its body wall consists of three layers of cells known as ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm again inside their body has a cavity is there that cavity is known as body cavity that body cavity is having other name that is u coelom or u coelomate they are u coelomate organisms u coelomate means they are having true coelom that means a true body cavity they are having true body cavity inside the body they are having a cavity is there true cavity they are having so we are calling them as true coelomate or we can call them as u coelomate or only if you are saying coelomate then also same meaning is coming then other thing their body has bilateral symmetry what is meant by bilateral symmetry bilateral symmetry means their body has an imaginary axis if we cut its body through that imaginary axis then we will get two equal halves otherwise we won't get two equal halves so we can say that if we cut its body through one axis we will get two equal halves because of that all or all arthropoda are having bilateral symmetry then their outer surface we can say that around its body all parts of the body we can say covered with the help of a particular type of chemical we can say so we can say that it is a hard substance with the help of that its all part is covered so we can say that their body has a chitinous exoskeleton chitin is a chemical so we can say that its body is having a chitinous exoskeleton it is a hard substance because of that its body is having a hard skeleton is there when we touch its surface we will feel that means a hard feeling will be there 
that is because of the help of a particular chemical with that its body is its body surface is made so that chemical is known as chitin so we can say that its body has or body is covered with the help of a kind of skeleton that is known as chitinous skeleton one more thing is there in case of them they are having they are showing uni male organism different that means in their in arthropoda male organism different female organism different so we can say that they are unisexual unisexual means female separate male separate will be there now once again we will have a quick revision we can say that arthropoda its meaning they are having jointed appendages appendages means legs even i can say that their body has many segments so here also you can find that many joints are there many pieces joint like a look is there here here means a pieces joint then formed its legs we can say that their legs that means the number of types of large number of arthropoda is available that phylum or phylum arthropoda is the largest phylum why because it has large or highest number of organisms are there they are living from deep ocean to high mountains examples cockroaches prawns crabs all types of insects now we can say that millipede centipede they are having large number of legs in case of cockroach they are having six legs so legs number is not fixed their number uh, legs number is different in case of arthropoda they are unisexual unisexual means a male organism different female organism different they show bilateral symmetry their body is around its body all parts of the body we can say covered with the help of a substance a skeleton that is known as chitinous exoskeleton then their body wall is made with the help of three layers of cells that is known as because of that it is known as triploblastic triploblastic means three layered cells are there in its body wall they are upper layer that or outer layer is known as ectoderm middle layer is known as mesoderm inner layer is known as endoderm again in its body there is a body cavity that body cavity because of the presence of its body cavity we are calling them as eucoelomate animals what are the important characteristics of phylum mollusca phylum mollusca is the second largest group of animals they live in the aquatic or they are in the aquatic as well as terrestrial animals aquatic animals itself found in fresh water as well as marine water marine organisms or marine mollusks number is more than fresh water ones their body is very soft on its body there is a cover that cover is known as mantle we can say that body cover of the mollusks are known as mantle this body cover is having the capacity to produce around it a calcareous shell calcareous shell its meaning calcareous shell its meaning calcium carbonate cell calcium carbonate shell you might be seen snail on its body a hard cover you might be seen that hard cover is calcium carbonate cover there are large number of mollusks few only we see we people seen even pearl oyster is there that is an example of bivalve 
other bivalve which we people are consuming as food then here one more example is there that is octopus some octopus that means we can say that some people are eating octopus as food there are large varieties of octopus is available some are means we can say that they all are having some poisonous poison producing arms we can say these arms we can call even tentacles poison producing arms we can say or tentacles we can say then on their arm some suckers are there these suckers containing poison producing bags are there poison producing bags we can say or we can say poisonous bags we can say that is only the suckers all types of we can say that all species of octopus is having the capacity to produce poison in their suckers which is present in their arms octo octo means eight armed creatures there are some species of octopus is highly dangerous it is producing such a powerful venom or poison that can kill even 10 people at a time we can see that much powerful venom it can be or poison it can be able to produce but some varieties i think the people who are eating octopus those octopus producing poison but they may not be that much harmful poison to the people such octopus may be eating by the people their size is small but the dangerous highly dangerous octopus its size will be very large now here we people can say that this this phylum that is uh, mollusca phylum mollusca is the second largest phylum in the world second largest phylum means first already you people studied that is arthropoda phylum arthropoda is the largest phylum second largest phylum that is phylum mollusca so we can say that phylum mollusca also having large number of species of organisms now what is its visceral mass visceral mass visceral mass means the different types of organs which are present inside its body we can say that excretory organs may be there circulatory organs may be there respiratory organs may be there like that where different organs which are present in its body its body is very soft over its body there is calcareous shell we can say that this calcium carbonate shell in some of them on its body or around its body some of them inside the body so calcareous shell is not present only around its body some of the organisms of mollusca has even its calcareous shell calcium carbonate shell is present inside its body now again we can say that this visceral mass its a meaning which all organs are present we can say especially internal organs which are present in its body together we can say as visceral mass around the visceral mass there is a cover skin cover we can say that is known as mantle this mantle is having the capacity to produce calcareous shell either around its body or inside the body then they are having head foot as well as visceral mass these mollusks are having three parts we can say head will be having even they are having muscular foot then they are having visceral mass 
then we can say that their body inside their body we can say that visceral mass is there that visceral mass is surrounded by mantle that mantle has no segments arthropoda we studied their legs are having joints even their body has segments body outer cover of the body that is also having segment we studied but here in case of mollusca on its body there is no segments now we will have a quick revision of mollusca we can say that mollusca have large number of phylum mollusca has large number of different species of organisms they are the second largest phylum in the world they are living either aquatic life or we can say terrestrial life aquatic life leading ones are living either in marine or in the fresh water most of them are living in the marine aquatic creatures aquatic mollusks if you are seeing most of them are living in the marine marine means sea or ocean few are living few types few species are living in the fresh water then even some are living in the land living on the land or in the land then one more speciality they are having body cavity so we can say that they are u coelomate u coelomate that means they are having true coelom or true body cavity in their body their body is very soft then they are having head visceral mass as well as foot visceral mass means all internal organs together we can say as visceral mass then their body some of them in case of snail its body is not having bilateral its body is not showing bilateral symmetry remaining all mollusks are showing bilateral symmetry we can say that through a section we can say that in its body there is an imaginary section through that if you are cutting we will get it to equal halves except snail so we can say that they all are having bilateral most of means leaving snail we can say all are having bilateral symmetry their body is very soft they are having head visceral mass as well as foot then we can say that aquatic fire aquatic mollusks when we compare them most of them are living in the marine very few are living in the fresh water then we can say that others are living on land or in the land then mantle mantle means the outer cover of its body that is having the capacity to produce a calcareous shell either around its body or inside the body calcareous shell its meaning calcium carbonate shell it is very hard then here we studied few examples snail it is not having bilateral symmetry then by when octopus like that way many examples are there remaining all are having bilateral symmetry all mollusks are triploblastic triploblastic means what their body wall is made with help of three layers of cells that is ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and they are unisexual unisexual means what male organism different and female organism different now we are studying about important characteristics of echinodermata echino its meaning saying that their outer cover is made with the help of either spines or we can say with the help of ossicles ossicles means plates these spines as well as ossicles made with the help of calcareous shell 
calcareous means calcium carbonate so here we can say that in case of echinodermata they all are marine ones none of them are available in fresh uh, fresh water or even none of them are available on the land all of them are available in the marine marine means either in the sea water or in the ocean water we can say that their outer cover that is very hard either it is made with the help of spines or we can say with the help of ossicles or we can say with the help of spines as well as ossicles ossicles means hard plates now this hard plate or the spines are that is made with the help of calcium carbonate because of that saying that the their outer cover or their skeleton is calcareous here few examples are there these two are starfish this is its a dorsal surface this is its a ventral surface dorsal means a upper surface ventral means a it's a downside part this is upper as well as this is the lower part now this is other example that is sea cucumber almost a cucumber like shape is there because of that it has got the name sea cucumber this is a sea urchin full of spines are there on its body so we can say that these two are coming under starfish this is sea cucumber this is sea urchin it has full of spines on its body here we can say spines as well as hard plate is there on its body so we can say that spines plus ossicles o double s i c l e s ossicles means the plates hard plates we can say now here we people are studying about the starfish it's also upper part of spine is not spine also there even its body we can see different species of starfish is there some are having spines some are having spines and plates that is ossicles some are having only ossicles ossicle means a plates now these organisms are having the capacity to move through the sea water so we can say that they are having the capacity to move from one place to another leaving few some are sedentary sedentary means they have no movement some echinoderms are sedentary they have no movement but others are having the capacity to move from one place to other for that their ventral surface is having such a type of feet is there this is known as a tube feet with the help of their tube feet they move from one place to another then they are having we can say that in their larval stage they are having bilateral symmetry in their larval stage they are having larval stage they are having bilateral symmetry but when they become adult they are having radial symmetry during their adult stage they are having radial symmetry now what is meant by radial symmetry through its central axis i can say through the center if we are cutting all imaginary it is imaginary axis we can say but we are not directly cutting them just imagine through the central axis if we are cutting in any plane anyhow we will get two equal halves that is known as radial symmetry now bilateral symmetry means they are having only one imaginary section through that if we are cutting we will get a two halves otherwise we won't get a two halves so in case of echinoderms they show two types of symmetry that is bilateral symmetry as well as radial symmetry bilateral symmetry they show in their larval stage at the same time radial symmetry they show in their adult stage 
here we are studying three examples this is a starfish this is again starfish this is its a ventral surface that means lower surface this is this is its a upper surface or dorsal surface we can say this is a sea cucumber then this is a sea urchin then again we can say that they are having or they are having true coelom so we can say as yes, they are u coelomate u coelomate that means they are having true coelom true coelom means a true body cavity then they are having a remarkable capacity of regeneration what is meant by regeneration regeneration means what regeneration means by accident we can say any part of its body cut and go then that body can be able to grow again so such a remarkable regeneration ability all these echinoderms are having again we can say that these echinoderms are triploblastic triploblastic means their body wall has a three layers they are ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so we can say that their body wall consists of three different layers of cells top layer that is known as ectoderm middle layer that is known as mesoderm inner layer that is known as endoderm so we are calling them as triploblastic again we can say they are unisexual unisexual its meaning what in case of ectoderms male as well as female organisms are different so we will have one uh, very quick revision of it that is ecto uh, sorry echinodermata its the meaning they are having spines on their body even we can say that their body is having either spines and or ossicles may be or may not be ossicles but they will be having spines so we can say that their body has spines and ossicles or we can say their body has spines or ossicles here we can say that all spines are there no ossicles but here spines as well as ossicles are there here also we can say that spines and ossicles along spines such a way also organisms will be there along plate such a way also echinoderms will be there now ossicles meaning they are having calcareous plate on its body hard surface on its body will be there or we can say that they may be having spines and ossicles spines will be there surface when we will touch we will feel very very hard surface then they are having for lo locomotion for movement they are having tube feet with the help of tube feet they can be able to move from one place to other some are sedentary they are not having the capacity to move from one place to another adult stage they show radial symmetry at the same time in the larval stage they show bilateral symmetry they are uh, appearing or we can say that they are unisexual organisms unisexual it's meaning male organism different female organism a different they show remarkable regeneration capacity that means by mistake or by accident any part of its body cut and go again that can be able to regenerate again it can be able to grow so they are having a remarkable ability of regeneration their body cavity they are having true body cavity so we can say that they are u coelomate their body is a triploblastic body wall has three layers of cells they are known as ectoderm mesoderm as well as endoderm examples we had already studied starfish then sea urchin and sea cucumber what are the important characteristics of hemichordates 
Hemichordates has got one more name that is Echon worms. Echon worms. They are looking like worms. Then they are, most of them are living in the sea water. So we can say that these animals are marine animals. Marine animals. Even they are having the character of making holes in the sand and survive in that. So we are calling them as burrowing animals. They are burrowing animals. They are having the capacity to make holes in the sand. All, are, all hemichordates are living in the sea water. But not in the sea, deep sea. They survive in the sand where shallow water is there. Less water is there. Such place they survive. Now, here one example that is Belenoglossus. One more example is there. This is the first example. Second example we can say Secoglossus. These two are the examples of hemichordates. They are available in the form of worms. They are burrowing creatures. They make holes in the sand. Then they survive inside that. Their body has three parts. Upper part that is known as proboscis. Middle part that is known as collar. Then downside, that part that is known as a trunk. Third part of its body. It has three parts. First part, proboscis. Second part, collar. Third part, that is trunk. Inside the trunk, there are large number of pharyngeal gill slits. Pharyngeal gill slits. Pharyngeal gill slits help for taking food materials along with the water. After that, the ended water filter out with the help of pharyngeal gill slits. Pharyngeal gill slits. G I double L. Pharyngeal gill slits. With the help of pharyngeal gill slits, the water filtered out. Now, for what purpose it is taking water? It takes food materials along with the water. Then it filters out the water which is entered inside its body. Now, inside the proboscis, there is a skeleton. That skeleton is known as notochord. This notochord supports its body. We can say balancing its body. This notochord is a rod which is made with the help of a cartilage. Cartilage means it is a skeleton. We can say that notochord. What is notochord? It is a skeleton which is present inside its proboscis. Now that skeleton is made with the help of cartilage. Cartilage is not, not a bone. But at the same time, it is a hard substance which is present in its proboscis. This notochord supports its body or balancing its body. Again, we can say that her, uh, this hemichordates are of uh, two types. Either they are hermaphrodites, hermaphrodite. Or we can say unisexual. Unisexual or hermaphrodite. So we can say that hemichordates are hermaphrodite or unisexual. Hermaphrodite means their 
male as well as female reproductive system present in same organism. Or unisexual means male organism will be different, female organism will be different. So we will have once again a quick revision of it. This is an example of hemichordate that is belenoglossus. One more example we are having that is sacoglossus. They have got one more name that means hemichordate has got one more name that is echon animals or echon worms. They are like worms. Their body has three parts proboscis, collar as well as trunk. Inside the trunk many pharyngeal gill slits are there. Pharyngeal gill slits help for filter out water which is taken inside the body along with the food materials. Inside the proboscis there is a notochord or a skeleton we can say. That skeleton is made with the help of a cartilage which supports its body. Then they are burrowing animals. Even they are marine animals. They burrow, sand, burrow, the, burrow inside the sand and they survive. They burrow, they make holes in the sand. Then they survive in the sand.